What do you do in cases where you have more than just soft, muddy ground? What do you do when your situation is a lot of surface water collecting in your backyard, causing ponding areas? Well, we're going to show you what we do in a case like this, and we got to catch a bunch of surface water as well as groundwater, subsurface water. Now, we had to replace a failed PVC French drain because it only had holes pointing down. You can't jet it out when those holes pointing down are plugged on the outside of the drain. A trench that was built for a French drain is going to build up sediment from the bottom and work its way up. So when you run a jetter through the pipe, it doesn't do any good. The trench itself is full of sediment. This is why we use eight slot. It has eight slots, eight inlets, all the way around the pipe, 360 degrees. When you only have holes pointing down, it's just a matter of time before that system no longer works. Now we have all this high ground and it's running all the water right to the very back of this house. So we're gonna catch the surface water in a yard drain and then we're gonna catch the subsurface water in our French drain. So we're gonna show you two great systems in one trench. We build these all the time. I'm getting a lot of questions in the comment sections about how to do this. So I'm gonna show you it in detail. Don't jump around. There's gonna be a lot of tips and tricks throughout this entire video. Now you're gonna see how we have a solid pipe with all our inlet basins on it. We don't want the grass clippings and bark material from landscape beds to get in our French drain system. You can see how we wide together the two solid pipes. We're tying together the two solid pipes because you don't want to let any debris get in your French drain system and plug those inlets. You can see the directional tees. We use directional tees. Just a regular tee, the water just slams inside, kind of slams to a stop. A directional tee is going to send it in the direction you want it to go. Again, you got your two solid pipes wide together. There it is up close so you guys can see it. And then we have our dominant French drain wrapping around. You can see we have that yard drain contained in a solid pipe so that the debris that we collect in it is not going to contaminate our French drain pipe. And yes, you can then wire both systems together and they could share this same discharge line. There's nothing wrong with that. By the time all this water makes it to the discharge line, whatever contaminants are floating in that yard drain collection system, it's going to get washed right out. The inlets on the French drain system are going to be preserved forever because we isolated the yard drain from the French drain. Now we also have a roof runoff system and we got a pop-up inside our French drain. This is how you do a pop-up to French drain. Don't do a direct tie-in because you're going to fill your French drain pipe full of shingle gravel. Here you can just see how we left a pop-up on top of the French drain. We got our inline catch basin. You can see we have our gutter adapter right here to make that connection. Again, you can see solid pipe with an inline catch basin and then a pop-up emitter that has an open bottom so the water can just fall into the French drain that way. And you can clean the leaves out with that catch basin pop-up hybrid. So again, you could see the eight slot. It's got holes 360 degrees on the bottom, on the sides, on the top. You can see that directional T. You want to make sure when you put this system together that you don't leave these inlets too high. If the inlets are too high, you're not going to collect all the surface water. There's going to still be some surface water that it can't take in. So you want that inlet to be at the dirt level, not the turf level. And even if you go a little lower than dirt level, because when we put the risers on to adjust the height, sometimes you're caught in between on a size where you need to go a little higher, but a riser is too high. Well, then keep it a little on the low side. It could be a quarter inch below the dirt, not the turf, the actual dirt that the grass is growing in. You want to leave these low so they can take in all that water, all that surface water. Now you can see how the guys are cutting the fabric out so that they can put that turf restrictor plate back on. It's really, really cool. We're going to show you a bunch of details here. So you can see how the guys backfill with the stone. You want to make sure you get all the stone underneath the turf restrictor plate. That way it's going to be secured. It's going to be solid. You'll see how the guys work the stone around that directional T and get their lid set perfect. 
Notice how the guys are using inch and a half round rock. This is key. The bigger the rock, the bigger the void. If you have bigger voids, you're going to move the water quicker to the inlet on the French drain pipe. So a small stone is very compact and it doesn't have much void. Yes, you'll get seepage. It'll slowly seep into your French drain pipe. But when you use inch and a half round rock, you have such large voids, the water moves through it so fast. This is key because the faster you move the water from a rain event, the faster you move water from a thaw, the faster you get that water out of the yard, the firmer the ground remains. If you don't build your system to evacuate the water quickly, you're going to end up with soil saturation. This is when your yard is really spongy, really soft, muddy. Avoid that. Collect the water up quick. Evacuate it. Get it off the property. Then you're going to keep your yard nice and firm. We're going to show you how to cut the fabric out around your directional tee. We're going to take the lid off the turf restrictor plate that was on just to keep the stone from falling in. You're going to see Francisco take a box knife and just make an X. And then that way the fabric is nice and tight around that directional tee. That's how you keep the debris out of your French drain system. You have a nice burrito wrapped French drain system and you're not giving any opportunity for contaminants to get in that French drain system. That way it'll last forever. Remember, we're building a yard drain system inside a French drain. We're utilizing the same trench. We're going to make sure that we backfill this directional T so that the plate is firm. We want to make sure that it's secure. If kids are running in the yard, they're running on that. We want it nice and secure. So the guys adjust the stone around that directional T. They get that plate to where it fits really nice. So we got a four inch drain plug with a turf restrictor plate. So the grass can't grow over our inlet. That's one of the biggest peeves of mine. The industry has been doing this for decades and decades and decades, and we found a simple fix. You just put the drain plug in a turf restrictor plate so the grass can't grow over it. Make sure to cut the excess fabric before you burrito wrap it. If you see that you're going to have a heavy overlap, you want to trim that. You only want a few inch overlap to use the fabric pins. That's it. If you double it up, it's not going to take in water as well. We have a double punch fabric, so the water just flows through capillary action, you know, and just with the help of gravity through all these needle punched holes in our fabric. But if you overlap it, they don't line up, so you're not going to take in any water there where you have heavy overlap. Now, remember to keep the dirt for any downspouts that you run to your French drain system because you're going to use that dirt. You don't take a solid pipe to a downspout system and put stone and fabric around it. Here's our inlet basin. This is what they look like before they're installed. There's one in Valente's hand, and you can see a couple laying there on the cement. That's what that inline basin looks like. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the yard drain directional T. We're going to make sure that we backfill it properly. You want to really take the time to pack the dirt in around the downspout discharge line. You want to make sure that you take your time and you get that dirt chopped up in little pieces and packed around the pipe. Otherwise, the ground's going to settle on you. And you're going to have to take the sod off and you're going to have to add more dirt later and you're just going to make work for yourself. So it's best just to chop it up in little pieces and then work it in really good with your boot. Notice how we packed the dirt in right up to the French drain system. We had cut a hole in the fabric so that we could put the pop-up right over top of the French drain system. Now, always use a sod cutter and set it at the lowest notch meaning cut as much dirt off with that turf grass as you possibly can then you're going to be able to grow grass on top of your system if you don't have a sprinkler system then leave your french drain stone a little low so that you can add some topsoil again you could see what the turf restrictor plate is doing as far as keeping the grass from growing over the four inch drain plug when you're using these circle drains you want to do something to keep the grass from growing over that inlet once the grass grows over that inlet, you're no longer going to collect water in that drain. Once you're done packing the dirt around your downspout discharge line, you can then take the excess dirt and just haul it away. And just a reminder, once you use a sod cutter to cut the sod off, you want to then cut the sod in manageable pieces, like 18 inches. Then it goes together quickly and easily. 
Now notice how this drain is at dirt level, not turf level, at dirt level. You want the water to fall right in. You want to create just a small little pothole. Works fantastic. You'll collect every last drop at the surface. Now when installing one of these kits, a trick to cutting the grass out, take a piece of sod and push it down on the lid and it'll leave a lid imprint. You can then trace it. You can just take your box knife and cut it and you're gonna have a perfect piece that fits around your turf restrictor plate. Super easy, work smarter, not harder. That's our motto. Just goes together too simple. Make sure that your turf restrictor plate is at dirt level. You can be a oh, quarter inch, even below dirt level. You wanna funnel all that water into the system. Now the kit that you've seen installed today, we sell in our online store. It comes with all the pieces and parts that you need to do a hundred feet of French drain yard drain combination, a two pipe system. You have 200 feet of pipe. You have 100 feet of our high octane armor pipe and 100 feet of our eight slot. You could always add to the order. If you have some downspouts that need to be ran. And here, this is a tip. If you have a downspout hitting the concrete and you're just frustrated how you're going to catch all this water, especially in a case like this, there's two stories of water coming down this one downspout. It's responsible for a lot of water. Well, here's what you do. You put one of those yard drain right there. That water comes off the cement and it's lined right up to one of our yard drains that it funnels to and it just gets evacuated quickly before it saturates your yard. If you found any of these tips and tricks helpful, please give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. And if you have some questions about this installation, leave them in the comments section. I'm Robert Sherwood, your host, and until the next video.